Hey everybody, welcome to my video. In today's episode, I'm going to show you my process for leveling the frets on a compound radius fretboard. Now, it's a little bit different than if this were a single, a single radius uh, fretboard. For example, if this were a 12 inch radius, I would just take my straight edge, get the fretboard level, take a long radius block, stick some sandpaper on it, give it a few strokes, and you're pretty much good to go. Well, you can't do that with a compound radius board because you have a, a, a constant transition, right, from one end to the other. And this board is a 10 inch radius at the nut. It's a 14 inch radius at the 24th fret. And that requires a, a little bit of a different technique. It's a little bit tedious. It's a little bit time consuming, but, uh, but it yields good results. And you know what, if you've been wanting to try a compound radius fretboard on your next build, go for it. Go for it. Take my process here and see if it will work, see if it works for you. I'm not saying my process is the best. I'm not saying it's the only one out there. It just works for me. And I think it'll work for you too. And really all you need is a good cup of coffee and then go drop on a copy of uh, Asia from Steely Dan on your turntable. Have a little patience and you know what? You'll be done before the B-side. All right, let's get started. Okay, so first thing is first, you have to start with a level fretboard. And for that, I'm going to use a notch straight edge. A lot of different companies make uh, make these. This is a Music Nomad. I know Crimson Guitars makes a great one too, and uh, I'll probably go ahead and order one of those just to, just to have one of those. It's a little different style, but you got to start with a level fretboard. And so what I like to do is just uh, put this right up here, right down the center line of my fretboard. And I've got my truss rod wrench. This is a dual action truss rod. Now I can add up bow or back bow as needed. And I take a flashlight and I'm going to shine right down through here while I look down and look for daylight and adjust my truss rod with my truss rod tool accordingly until I get the fretboard level, not the frets. We're talking about the wood of the fretboard. So I'm going to do that right quick and, uh, and then we'll go to the next thing. Okay, now that we know that our fretboard is completely straight, completely level, the next thing to do is take some masking tape, just some painter's tape, and go ahead and let's tape up the fretboard and, uh, and get it protected. And I like to put some tape around the body of the guitar here. What I like to do is run a strip down either side and then put the top strips over. So let's get that done right quick. All right, so there we are. All of our prep work is done. We have ensured with the straight edge that our fretboard is, is straight, and then we've masked off the fretboard, and so that, that's it. That's the prep work. So now it's time to get started on the actual fret leveling process. And the first thing you have to do, first thing that I do, is take a good old trusty fret rocker. I want to identify any high frets I've got. Now, I'm not going to be super picky this first time around, uh, I just want to identify the serious offenders, right? We're just going to play whack-a-mole. We're going to find out who's got his head stuck up, and, and we're going to knock it down. And so we're taking the fret rocker, and I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to check on the edge in the middle and then toward the other edge. And then I'm going to walk down a fret, and I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to take a Sharpie, and I'm just going to give it a mark there where the uh, where the high spots are. So... Let's get started. Okay, so we've been down the whole fretboard with our fret rocker, and I've kind of identified, you know, just a handful of places here where the frets are frets are a little high, and so uh, it's time to get rid of those. We're going to use some specialty tools, some secret specialty tools right here. Three blocks of wood. This is Epay. Uh, it's just a real hard, real stable wood. And I've got three different size blocks. And what I've done is I've put masking tape on the on the outer edge and a little strip of stick on sandpaper in the middle. And, and two layers of masking tape is as thick as, as the sandpaper. And so what I've got is a, a level surface across through here. And so what I'm going to do is put this down here, whatever fret's sticking up, the fret on either side of it's a reference, and we can uh, we can get that kind of uh, kind of buffed off like that. And I'm going to do that on each one, and the different width blocks are because you know down here the frets are closer together, and right here, and and I know that 
Stuart McDonald makes a tool similar to that. I think it's called a fret kisser, they call it. But you know what? You can make this for free out of some wooden scrap blocks you've got sitting around your house. Just make sure it's a good hard wood and that this is a, a very straight surface. And so I'm going to use those and go ahead and, and get rid of these high spots right here the first time through. So let's get started on that. And as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm just moving it back and forth across the fretboard like that. And uh, you can see already that one's gone. All right, we're going to come over here. I'm going to get that. See, that took care of that, that high spot right there. Right there. Like I said, make sure that you're only spanning three frets. When you need to, if you choose to make a tool like this, um, just step down to the step down to the next size when you need to. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. That's 400 grit too, by the way. I've got stuck on there, so you can use 320, use 600, use you know, use whatever you have. I I wouldn't go any um, I wouldn't go any coarser than than 320. Uh, actually. All right, so that's a pretty good start. And what I'm going to do now is take the fret rocker and I'm going to go back over this fretboard all over again. Uh, Again, with a Sharpie, I'm going to mark the high spots. I'm going to be a little more picky this time. Uh, this time, I kind of want to come back with these and, and catch everything. And so that's what I'm going to do next. Let's get the fret rocker out. So I went over with the fret rocker now and been a little more picky about finding those high spots. And so I'm getting ready. I'm going to get my blocks out again, and we're going to go back and take care of those, uh, those high spots. Been a little more picky, take a little more time just to you know, just to work those down and, um, and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay. So I've gone back over it a second time with these blocks to knock down any high spots. And I took my fret rocker and I went back and I just checked one more time and, and we're looking pretty good. Actually, uh, these frets were pretty doggone level to start with. I only had a couple of problem areas. And so now what I'm going to do is take these blocks and I'm going to start from, start from the nut side. And it kind of makes this first fret here a reference fret. And I'm just going to start working, working a few strokes, All right? I'm going to move down to the next fret, give it a few strokes, swinging all the way, all the way from end to end. And you can get right here on the edge. It really doesn't doesn't matter. Don't go over the edge, but you don't worry about going all the way to the edge. You're never going to sand a fret down really more than it needs to be because remember this is level across through here. You have the fret on either side of it as a reference. And so, so I'm going to go down through here like this. Change blocks when you need to change blocks. All right, so I ran down through here one time with the blocks. I'm probably going to do that two or three more times, and that's kind of the tedious part. But, but believe me, this this will get you this will get you really close right here. You'd be surprised. And so, um, so I'm going to kind of I don't have a rag here. I'm going to go get a rag and and wipe this off, and then I'm going to mark the top of the frets with a sharpie and run these blocks down through here a couple of more times. Okay, so I've gone through that process with my little wooden blocks here several times, always starting at the nut, working my way down, walking down to the smaller block when I need to. And these frets, I've gone back and I've checked them with a fret rocker, and they, they, they're looking really good. I don't really have any high ones right now. but And, I you know, maybe I could stop here and go ahead and, and crown the frets, but I'm going to take just this little short, little short beam right here. Um, 
and I've went back with a Sharpie and I've marked the top, laid the Sharpie over on the side like this and just kind of marked the top of each fret like so. So just like that, going down the fretboard, right? And I'm going to take this little beam and I'm just going to kind of swing it over the fretboard. When you're dealing with a conical radius fretboard, you don't want to go, you can go straight right down the center line of the fretboard, but you don't want to, you don't want to do that anywhere else. You want, you want this kind of motion, right? This, this, remember this thing makes a cone. If you were to wrap it on around and make a cone. And, and so I'm going to start over here and just kind of come down through here like this, working my way back and forth the fretboard. Come back up, kind of swinging from side to side. Oh yeah, it's looking good. Come down through here a couple more times. Change grit to a little finer grit. Yeah. Okay, so now, now that I know all of my frets are level, we're going to add a little bit of fall off here on these last last handful of frets. And all that does is it just takes these last last set of frets here, maybe uh, say from you know seventeen on up, or, or maybe where the body meets on up. And we're going to add, we're going to bring them down a little bit, add just a little bit of fall off, and that goes a long way toward keeping this guitar from buzzing. And so, so what I like to do is I'm just going to come up here to about. Uh, yeah, we're going to go with 17th fret right here. And I'm going to add two pieces of tape right over that 17th fret right there. I'm going to take my Sharpie again. I'm going to go back and mark the tops of the frets. Then I'm going to take my fret leveling. A little short fret level and beam, and we're just going to work this area right here. And you can see, all right, so uh, remember this end is riding up on this tape. A couple of pieces of this tape are probably maybe ten thousandths of an inch thick. And so we've got all the Sharpie off here, all off of the second one. It's starting to come off of the third one, and you'll kind of see you'll just work its way up until you, you get that Sharpie worn off of that last Remember, on a conical radius, you want to kind of swing this from, from parallel with the outer edge of the fretboard to the outer edge of the fretboard. Thereabouts. You just want to work this until you get, uh, until you start seeing some wear on this last fret right here before your tape. Okay, so our fret leveling job is pretty much done. So to kind of recap what we've done, uh, we got the fretboard straight, the, the fretboard, not the, not the frets. We used our not straight edge. We got that straight, taped it off, took a fret rocker, identified the, the high spots, the serious offenders, took, my, took the little blocks here with the sandpaper, worked those down, come back and repeated that process being a little more picky. And then I, I took the blocks and I started uh, at the nut end, come down to the toward the bridge, run down through there several times, all right, and then come back with the uh, the little short fret leveling beam, kind of swing it from side to side as we worked. Put some tape over this, got the fret leveling beam back out, added a little bit of fall off on these last few frets, and so they're looking really great. So we're we're pretty much done with that. Next thing to do is I'm going to take some solvent. And I'm going to clean off all of the Sharpie marks and I'm going to go back and put fresh Sharpie marks on here and then take a fret leveling file, or excuse me, a fret crowning file. I got fret level stuck in my head. 
Kentucky fret crowning file, and we're going to put a nice a nice crown on these frets, and then they'll be ready to polish, and we'll be done with a fret job. Okay, so I took some solvent and a rag and cleaned off any old Sharpie marks that were left on here. I took another Sharpie, marked the fret. I like to use red for this. It just helps me to see it better. Uh, marked them all over. Got a fresh set of uh, Sharpie marks on top. I'm going to take an old three-sided fret file. This is an old Stumac file. I've probably had this thing, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 years. Who knows? But I'm going to go back and work these frets now, put a crown back on these frets until there's just a little thin red line left at the top of every one of them and polish them up and uh, we'll be done. So everybody, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching the video today. Uh, the next time... I know I keep saying this, but hopefully the next video, maybe we'll take a look at some hardware. My pickups are in the mail still, like I mentioned last video, actually due to be delivered tomorrow as of uh, the day of this film. And so I'm excited about that. So go to, go to the GGBO website, check out the charities that this contest supports. Go out and, and see if you feel like you can support some of those charities. Check out some of the other builders. Look at their uh, videos online. Great builds going on. Thanks, guys. See you next time.